Okay, good day. This is Math 140 College Algebra. I am Professor McCulley. This is Lesson 4.5, Long Division and Synthetic Division. It's going to be a doozy. Let's get right to it. Um, that's not quite the right first slide. There we go. Learning Goals. Uh, today, we are going to use Long Division to divide polynomials, and we are going to use Synthetic Division to divide polynomials. And what does that mean? To the division algorithm... If f of x and d of x are polynomials such that the degree of x is less than or equal to the degree of f of x, there exists unique polynomials q of x and r of x such that f of x is equal to d of x times q of x plus r of x. And then if that r of x is equal to 0, then d is said to divide f. Whoa, that seems awful complex, but... It makes a whole lot of sense if we think about it in the context of numerical values. Now, let's go back to third grade when you learned how to do long division the first time. And just as a personal note, back in third grade, a very young Mr. McCulley was not so good at long division and it tore him up. So um, this always brings back great memories for me. But if I were to ask you to take... Um, 15 and divide that number by 4. We did it through long division, so the 4 would go on the outside, and then the 15 would go on in the inside. Now, this 4 right here, well, let's just do the division first. So, does 4 go into 1? No, it doesn't. Does 4 go into 15? Yes, it does. 4 goes into 15 three times, and then 4 times 3 is 12, and when we subtract that, we get a 3 left over, and that becomes our remainder. Now, I don't expect you to remember all of these, but when you do a division, that is a quotient. This thing right here is called the dividend. And this thing right here is called the divisor. Now, we know that if I went um, 3 times 4 and then added the remainder, I should get 15. Or if I went 15, that thing is equal to that divisor 4 times the quotient 3 plus the remainder 3. If this is my d of x, if this is my q of x, and this is my r of x, and this is just f of x, we have f of x equals d of x times q of x plus r of x, just like we have right there. So. It makes good sense in the context of something concrete that you've seen before. And so it, I hope that that makes this a little bit more understandable. And the remainder theorem, if a polynomial f of x is divided by some factor, or well, not necessarily a factor, divided by um, some linear expression, x minus k, then the remainder r is the value that you would get if you plugged in that k into the function, which is kind of a cool result. It's what allows us to do synthetic division, and I actually have that written right there. The remainder r gives you the value of f at x equals k. If r equals 0, then we can say x minus k is a factor of f of x. And if r equals 0, then k comma 0 has to be a intercept of the graph of f. All right, so when we're talking about long division, this will this long division process that I'm about to show you will work for any type of division of two polynomials and it will give you the remainder. Synthetic division is the one that you'll like and will use it more often, but it can only be used when the divisor is a linear factor. And so if something is if your divisor is something other than linear, you have to use long division, but most of the times our divisors will be linear factors our linear expressions. Looking at long division, here is an instance. This is my divisor right here. And so since my divisor is squared, I would have to use long division. I also want to bring 
a your eye attention to this particular term right here you see that I have 0 x squared this is a placeholder and anytime you're missing a term I would suggest that you put a placeholder 0 in there for it and when we do synthetic division if you have a missing term you must put the placeholder in now the good news is when we go to do this division we only worry about the leading terms of both the divisor and the dividend and we worry about everything else afterwards and we're going to do this until the result is uh, his degree is less than this thing so since this is an x squared divisor when the result that's left is linear we know that we will be done so I look at this x squared and I ask myself what times x squared is 3x to the fifth well 3x to the third is 3x to the fifth so 3x to the third times x squared is 3x to the fifth 3x squared times 2x is going to be 6x to the fourth and then 3x to the third times 1 is 3x to the third so we are going to subtract that whole expression right there and so 3x to the fifth minus 3x to the fifth is 0 and that's important negative 4x to the fourth minus 6x to the fourth is negative 10x to the fourth and then 2x to the third minus 3x to the third is negative x to the third and we're going to bring down this 0x squared now just like in the first one we only care about this first term of both the divisor and this new portion of the dividend and so I asked myself, what times x squared is negative 10x to the fourth? Well, negative 10x squared. And again, if you didn't put this placeholder in, you wouldn't have any place for this negative 10x squared. So negative 10x squared times x squared is negative 10x to the fourth. Negative 10x squared times 2x is negative 20x to the third. And negative 10x squared times 1 is negative 10x squared. And now I'm going to subtract that. Subtract the negative is like plus positive, so these cancel. Negative x to the third minus negative 20x to the third is going to be 19x to the third. And then 0x squared minus 10x, negative 10x squared is going to be positive 10x squared. And when I bring down the x, I'm going to have that. And so I ask myself, what times x squared is 19x to the third? Well, 19 x is and so 19x times x squared is 19x to the third 19x times 2 is let's see here if it was 20 it'd be 40 so it's going to be 38x squared and then 19x times 1 is just 19x and again we are subtracting that away so let's bring this down just a little bit further and those first two terms cancel. I've got negative 28x squared. And then I subtract these two. That'll give me negative 18x. And then I bring down my negative 1. And I'll have to multiply by negative 28. That'll give me negative 28x squared. That'll give me negative, let's see here, 2 times 28, 2 times 30 would be 60 minus 4. Um, 60 minus uh, 56 yeah X and then negative 28 and when I subtract that away these first two cancel and this one becomes a positive so positive 56 and 18 let's see here if I said uh, it'll give me 46 and then eight more will give me 38 yeah so I'll have positive 38x, and then it'll be positive 27. Now, since this is a linear expression, I know that I am finished. And so my result, my final answer is going to be this quotient. So 3x to the third minus 10x squared plus 19x minus 28 plus the remainder 38x plus 27 all over the divisor x squared plus 2x plus 1. And that is my final answer. Okay, synthetic division only works when 
The uh, divisor is linear. It uses synthetic substitution. Find the value that makes the divisor or the factor equal to zero. And then the resulting values are coefficients of the quotient and the remainder. So what does that look like? So if they ask me to divide x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 6x plus 5, and they want me to divide by x plus 2, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the coefficients of this uh, divide, uh, dividend here. And so the x to the fourth has a coefficient of 1. And you'll notice that there is no x to the third term. So I need a 0 for this x to the third term. Right? And then I have negative 3 for the x squared. I have 6 for the x. And then I have a 5. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little box here. And I'm going to ask myself, what makes this zero and so negative two plus two is zero so i'm gonna put a negative two there i'm gonna put what makes this zero goes in the box all right so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna bring down this one one times negative two is negative two zero and negative two is negative two negative two times negative two is four four and three negative three four and negative three is one one times negative two is negative two negative two and eight is four four times negative two is negative eight i think i said that wrong let me go over this again 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 0 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4, plus negative 3 is 1. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2, plus 6 is 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 and 5 is negative 3. All right, so these here are the coefficients. And since I took x to the fourth and divided by x to the first, just like in this, well, this in this last one, you'll notice I started with x to the fifth and I divided by x squared. The result was x to the third. Five minus two is three. In this particular one, I'm going x to the fourth minus x to the first. One my, or four minus one will give me for my final answer one x to the third minus two x squared plus x plus 4 plus negative 3 over x plus 2 or what we could do is we could get rid of this plus yeah, the 3 there and make it 4 minus that fraction right there and have that well that's all i got for today folks today's marvel fun fact of the day in spider-man homecoming we see tony stark hitting on aunt may Ooh. This is not the first time Robert Downey Jr. and Marissa Tomei have had on-screen romances. They also played together in Chaplin at back in, way back in 1992 and were together in Only You back in 1994 and were often romantically linked for a while in the 1990s, way back in the day. Look how young Mr. RDJ looks in that picture. That's all I got. Have a good day. Bye.